Hi, welcome to Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel. I am Barbara Tuckett, your host and the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. I am a wellness travel specialist. I believe that our mind, body, and spirit all play into our well being, and I create travel experiences which improve your wellness so that you return from your vacation with more health, more happiness, and more connection, both with those you've traveled with and also with your destination. In these episodes, I explore travel and wellness experiences, giving you ideas and recommendations, and also interviewing people who have firsthand experience of the places where you may want to go next. Welcome. Let's get started. Hi, I'm so happy to today to get to talk to Paul Spackman. Hi, Paul. Hi, Barb. How are you today? I'm great. So I am so excited because Paul and his wife, Carrie, just recently returned from a river cruise on the Danube. And so today we are going to be talking all about their experience. They had an extra few days over in Europe as well, right? We did. So I want to just share their experience with you and let you see what they did. If you would want to do something similar, they have a really great itinerary. So I figured it would be a pretty simple way to go through this if I just kind of showed their um, river cruise as we go along and just kind of show their itinerary and what they did. And then we can kind of just talk through it. Yeah, sounds great. All right. So first day, of course, is just flying. Um, Always when you go over to Europe, you get on a flight and you have an overnight flight um, and then arrive in Europe the next day. Paul, you flew into Budapest and stayed your first night at a separate hotel. You didn't board the river cruise that same day. Tell us about that. Like, did the flight go okay? Um, Did the hotel stay go all right? Like, what what was that? Uh, Well, first and foremost, Barb, maybe just as a general thing, we had such a great time. I mean, we we, kind of thought this would be a once in a lifetime thing, but we had such a great time. We may be (laughs) calling you again before too too long. (laughs) Because <laughs> we, we want to do it again. That I know. Was, you kind of think really great. You kind of think it's going to be, oh, this is a big bucket list thing. And then you yeah. think, oh, yeah. we can't just do one. <laughs> I know. I know. Because there's there's the other side of the Danube and there's the Rhine and there's all sorts of yeah. places to go yeah. over there just in Europe. Exactly. But we know we had a great time. But yeah, uh, no real hitches. Our carrier, we flew with Delta uh-huh. and just loved their services. The plane ride was great. It was about a 10 hour flight from Salt Lake City to Amsterdam. Yeah. Everything went well. Everything was on time. We had actually two meals during the trip. It was awesome, but a great flight. Uh, we arrived there in Amsterdam, had a, a two hour layover and then a two hour flight down to Budapest. And uh, it was just, just great. Everything was great. The, the, the little city hopper flight wasn't quite as nice, yeah. smaller plane and just older plane. And but it was still fine. And the crew was great. You know, we had a, another small meal even on that two hour flight. And it was just a kind of a just a ham and cheese sandwich and some yeah. things. But no, it was great. And we, we did arrive that day earlier, which we're grateful that we had you help us book that. Uh, and so we got to spend an extra day there in Budapest. Actually, the first day of the cruise was in Budapest. So we, we boarded the ship uh, that, that next day after we arrived and then just stayed on the boat, but then spent a whole nother day in Budapest. But it was awesome just to have that extra day. And we saw lots of things that we weren't, didn't really have time just in that one excursion to see. Right. And we just mostly just walked. We just walked like crazy. We, we did catch one tram and go, went over to the parliament building and just had a really fun time and had dinner and watched as the lights came on the parliament building and saw some things there. The shoes, you know, they're on the Danube where yeah. some people were shot after World War II and and they fell into the river and just uh, sad, <laughs> horribly sad. But a chance to see an extra museum there in, in Budapest and, and just really have a good time. Our son had served his mission for the church there. And so that was really fun. And, and that that's my... That's my souvenir here, my, my Hungarian nice. t-shirt here. Uh, I, I always get a t-shirt or two and Carrie buys fridge magnets. And so th- those are kind of our standard yeah. Yeah. souvenirs, but we had a great time. We had a, a man meet us there at the airport to transport us from the airport to our hotel. And he was terrific. He was really good. He spoke quite good English. 
Okay. And told us all sorts of things about the history of the city and the buildings and some of the buildings, these buildings kind of came in with the Russians, you know, following World yeah. War II. And then this part of the city was a little older and Budapest is two, really two cities. Well, it's one city, but it's the, the Danube runs right through the middle. And so the, the okay. Buddha side with the hills is over across the way and we stayed on the Pest side and he gave us lots. It, it was, he was really good. And, okay. and really fun to, to have that 25 minute ride from the airport to our hotel. The hotel was right down near Old Town. It was marvelous, really fun, uh, well-designed hotel. They did serve breakfast, which was a nice thing that you included in our package there, Barb. Yeah. And uh, just, just a, we just had a really good time and saw some extra things there that were really exciting. Oh, good. Oh, good. So... And I'm sure it was nice to have like just a little extra night's sleep to catch up on your jet lag or yes. anything yeah. <laughs> before you jumped on the cruise. In fact, we got in and took maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. We didn't sleep really, but just kind of rested. Yeah. Uh, and then, but then we went out by three or so in the afternoon. We saw the, the, a really fun market. It, it was a big red brick building. I thought it was a government building or maybe a nice train station, but it just was an outdoor market. Well, it was indoor actually, but just a, a fruit and vegetable, just market and uh, some butchers, you know, some meat and bakeries and things. Upstairs were some souvenir shops. That's where I got the shirt and just really fun, just really well done. And a lot of fun things, you know, in, in all the cities that we visited, but really enjoyed that extra day in Budapest. Oh, nice. Nice. So, and then, so then that, you know, that's that next day was when you boarded the cruise and yep. your cruise, it was with the Avalon River Cruise Company and yes. your ship was called the View, right? Yes. The Avalon View. So, um, and Tell us a little bit about the ship. What did you think of the ship and how was that? How was your room? You guys had a really nice room yeah. on the ship. And, and we loved the ship. My okay. goodness, it was beautiful. And of course, these ships are much different than your large ocean cruise ships. Yes. Yes. Uh, we had 130 passengers and 43 crew members. Nice. And yeah, it was really nice. And then they took such good care of us, but the ship was beautiful. I think, and they mentioned this, I believe this is the first year the view had been commissioned. This is the first, the first, see, I, we weren't the very first cruise. I think it's been going on for a month or two, but just a beautiful boat, you know, the whole top shelf, you can see the picture there uh, just had seating and, and views as we sailed. Most of the time we sailed at night, so we didn't see too much, but but we, we loved the, the ship and, and our room, our, our suite uh, was, was not the most expensive. They had some, some royal suites that were even bigger, but ours was deluxe. It was really nice. They positioned the bed so you could actually lie on the bed and look out through the glass windows. Yeah. And just yeah. watch the countryside roll by. It was it was beautiful, yeah. and the rooms were were great. You know that they were spacious enough. Certainly, you know the, the bathroom was great, and had a, a television if you wanted it, and a little desk and a, another chair to sit on. It was really really nice. Uh, I I don't know if this is the first river cruise we've been on, but I know when we put this together almost a year ago, Barb, we we looked at. I I just got online and looked at several things. You know, I looked at two or three other carriers and so forth, but really impressed with Avalon and really glad we chose Avalon. It was just a, a really nice experience. And our room was great. The other facilities, you know, the dining rooms and the, and the meals were just so, so well taken care of. One thing we were really impressed with is they tried to cater meals even for the location where we were. Yeah. So we had Hungarian food the first night or two. Mm -hmm. uh, for dinner. And even the lunches and breakfasts were a little bit suited to the location where we were. It was really fun. And yeah. uh, so we got Hungarian food and then we got Austrian food and then we got German food and so yeah. forth. So it was, it was well done. The boat was beautiful. Uh, the, our cruise director, Vivian, she was fabulous and uh, just kept us alert every single day. We had a, a little 10 or 15 minute meeting and kind of explained times and, and the excursions and everything that we're going, going to do. So can't say enough about Avalon. Yeah. And uh, the boat was great. It's really fun. Good, good. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. So glad you loved it. That was the, you know, that, that of course was the, the whole idea. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to show just really quick the map of where you were, you just followed the Danube the whole yep. way um, through all of these towns. And we'll kind of um, 
hit on, you know, your different stops and maybe what you did. Yeah. Um, so you started here in Budapest in Hungary and you went through a little bit Slovakia and Austria and then ended up over in Germany. Yes. Right. So, okay. So, um, so then Budapest, um, you got on board, like you said, you got on board the first day and then the, the boat stayed there, the ship stayed there overnight. And so you were able to see Budapest the next day, yeah. right? Yes. And what was the, what was the um, excursion or what did you do that day in Budapest? Yeah. And so that, that first day was pretty much everybody on, on board did the same cruise that day or the same excursion that day. But we got on a bus and took a three hour bus tour all around the city. We saw everything by bus, uh, and uh, the picture there shows the Parliament Building, which is the uh, little oh, fridge nice. magnet Carrie got nice. was was the Parliament That's Building in, in Budapest, <laughs> and uh, really fun. Um, but we zipped all all over, so we saw the Opera House, and we saw the uh, the, the Millennial Square, and and then across the river we went up to the Buddha Castle, which is up on the hill on the Buddha side, and and then we stopped for about forty five minutes. We're able to walk around. They had some shopping and a few things there, and then we were able to walk down to the castle, which was which was kind of one of the main reasons we went on this to see the cal the palaces and the castles. Yeah. And it was, it was beautiful. We saw actually a changing of the guard in this administration building right next door. Totally unexpected. We Perfect. just happened to be walking by and there was this yeah. changing of the guard. Not terribly different than you see in Arlington, you know, at Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. And it was really fun to see that that formal ch changing of the guard and to walk around the Buddha, the castle. There was a really nice three hour bus tour uh, narrated. You know, we had a guide and, yeah. and he was narrating and it was beautiful. Tell us all about the city and the locations that we were visiting. And so just, just a really fun, which we really liked about the Avalon cruise is uh albeit a little more expensive than a regular ocean cruise trip mm -hmm. but uh, many of the excursions were included which, which yeah. we appreciated so they had a a couple of excursions each day that were just included within the price of the cruise and then they had some other excursions that were available for extra cost a little more active or a little longer or a little more specialized excursion and so most of those those uh included excursions were in the morning and then you had opportunities in the afternoon to do a, a different one, an extra one, or even a, a bigger one that maybe took all day that was a little extra cost. Yeah. But even those were in the oh, 60 to $80 price range. So not too exorbitant, but, but they had every single day, they had at least uh, one or two that were included within the cost of the cruise, mostly city cruises, a walking or a bus uh, tour. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that was just a really nice part of the package with Avalon. Yeah. A little more specialized if you wanted to pay yeah. for something additional, but, yeah. but otherwise you got a really good sense of the area and the town yes. just even by going on the yep. one. Yeah. That's awesome. So, okay. So our, your next day after you left Budapest, then you were in Bratislava, um, which is over in Slovakia. And tell us about this day or this experience. What did you do here? <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit here because our uh, our tour guy, I'm not, not the tour guy, but our, our uh, cruise director really scrambled because she got up at she, she told us, she says, yeah, I got up this morning at 6.30 or quarter to seven and looked out my window and she said, I'm not seeing what I'm supposed to be seeing. <laughs> she says, we had to stop 15 minutes down river because the, the little uh, harbor location where they were supposed to stop had already been occupied. Oh, and wow. so she had to scramble for the next two hours to find some buses <laughs> to come pick us up and take us the 15 minutes up to Dernstein, uh, which was fabulous. It was a really fun thing, but it worked out and she was great and, and got it all. I'm sure. She had uh, a near heart attack <laughs> trying to get yeah. all that done, but she had to line up two or three buses to get us there. We had a really fun two hour walking tour around the old town. And, and most of these towns have some similarity, but just those old buildings. I mean, here in the United States, we don't know what old, is right. we just have no idea right. a, a house is 30 or 40 years old and we think that's old 
you know, <laughs> yeah. but they have buildings that yeah. are hundreds of years old, castles and even streets, yeah. lots of cobblestone streets, which were intriguing to me. Mm-hmm. I've done enough with construction and things to know that that's just a lot of work. Yeah. And uh, yeah. those cobblestone streets were beautiful and just really fun. And the older buildings, castles and, you know, palaces in almost every town. We took yeah. a nice walking tour around uh, through the town, a little smaller town. Uh, a lot of mention about Mozart mm-hmm. and music, you know, Beethoven and Mozart and especially Mozart. Every single town claimed Mozart, you know, oh, because... Really? Because he, he visited a lot of these towns or yeah. stayed for yeah. six months or a year or five yeah. years in some of these places. Yeah. yeah. And so that was really fun. But um, th- they had a beautiful castle there that was not part of our walking tour, but it was right there near where okay. we were. And we had some time before lunch. And so Carrie and I hiked up. It was a pretty good little hike up the hill. Gorgeous, gorgeous castle. Uh, gardens, just breathtaking gardens out back and a great view it was up on the hill, great view of the river and the whole city. So we just had, had a really good time. They had one, one little uh, statue there that and they, they have statues all over Europe, of course, and monuments to historical and, and uh, political leaders and so forth. But they had one that was really funny. They had a statue of a guy on his elbows like this coming out of a, a, an underground manhole. Oh. And he had this, this fun smile on his face, and it was called Men at Work. So there was this <laughs> worker like this with a smile on his face. She says, really what he's doing is he's peering up the dresses of the girls that are passing by. <laughs> <laughs> so we were laughing about that. Here's this guy with this beautiful smile on his face, like that he was enjoying his, his work assignment, but he was really enjoying the view right. of, you know, right. the, the, the what should have been. break at work. <laughs> and then at work. So that was fun. But Bratislava was great. Uh, they had a, a crown church. Uh, a lot of the, the uh, royalty were crowned there, you know, when they were, they were made royalty or made king or prince or something. It was there at the church. They had a beautiful church with this really cool crown up on the steeple signifying, you know, the, the coronation of the kings and so forth there in yeah. Bratislava. It was really cool. Yeah. Pretty good. Oh, that is, that's fun. Well, and I think it's great, even if you, even if you didn't want to pay for an additional excursion, yeah, um, you could just wander around on your own. Like, right, right. And that, that was the case in, in every single place we visited, because most of the time we had the afternoon free, either for another excursion, they even had, you know, bikes that we could borrow, you know, on the ship there. And you take a bike ride around that they actually had a activity specialist on the boat. And she would often have an extra excursion that was a little more active, a little harder hike or a bike ride or a special tour. And, and uh, we never really took advantage of that. But we did go back and just walk around or take an extra uh, tour on our own to spend an extra hour walking around through that castle it was really great. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. That's very fun. Okay. So then you sail, like you said, most evenings you started sailing again to your next port. Right. So right. the following day you ended up in Vienna. And speaking of Mozart, this was, I'm sure yep. this was a big. <laughs> a lot, a lot of presence with Mozart. Yeah. Had a beautiful opera house there. This gorgeous. We were on a bus tour. This one was our second bus tour. Um, this Vienna is quite a large city. It was Sunday which is interesting uh-huh. because most places there in Europe, Sunday, things shut down. Right. So most stores are closed. Some of the souvenir shops and some of the things were open, but few restaurants, but, but all of the retail stores were, were closed down for the, for Sunday. Uh-huh. And, but it was really fun because they have some really big churches that this, the St. Stephen's cathedral, there, breathtaking in its size and beauty and so, and the bells were ringing, they had two or three churches there. And so our tour guide had tried to do some things, but it had to pause because <laughs> the <laughs> church bells would start to ring. And so she'd say, wait a minute and wait for, you know, 30 seconds till the bell yeah. stopped ringing. Then she could continue, but really a good tour, again, a bus tour, but we had some time to walk around and see the church and pick up a souvenir or two and just a really fun, it's big, Vienna's big. Yeah. Um, but it was it was just really fun to see some some of these stoic places that 
they're so rich in history and 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 then just to to learn about the Renaissance period and the establishment of these cities and and the changes that came through the Age of Enlightenment and the Renaissance and the music and the uh, new thought and everything else you know even the religious thought, you know the impact that Martin Luther had you know on the area and Germany and and Austria and so forth it, it was it was just a really fun historical uh, trip. Not yeah. only for history, but it was this, it was fun. We saw some really great things. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you just get, when you're, when you're in that type of setting, you get such a sense of history and yeah. all of the, yeah. the wide variety of things that have gone on. So they, they did have a nice concert there. We, we actually didn't go, but they had a, they announced it as an organ concert, but it actually was a small orchestra concert. Okay. But some of the people on boat went and said it was really great. They had a great time, but we opted not to go. Sometimes you just get a little exhausted and you just want to go to your room yes. and you just rest for an hour, yeah. you know, yes, you just some want things, to but yeah. But the, the Avalon, and I think maybe all the cruise lines do this, and they, they offer a few extra things you can do if you're interested. Right. Okay. All right. So the next day, you were in Dernstein. Is that yeah. how you pronounce it? Yes. Okay. In Dernstein. Yeah, because I think, okay, well, maybe the locals pronounce it differently than I do. But I think, I think that's... I think. Okay. I, everything's kind of yeah, going exactly like this. Around. I know. You know so from many all these days locations, of, but so many yeah. days of all these great towns and cities, they kind of right. get a little jumbled. Yeah. But so it was just, great. Yeah, we enjoyed a, a walking tour here. It's uh -huh. a very small town. Uh, they're really only, they said, 60 residents within the actual wow. little town of Dernstein, but um, Dernstein, Dernstein, I can't remember exactly how they say it. Again, just narrow cobblestone streets. I just have some notes here that I'm I'm reading yeah. off of no, that I, I wrote down each day. Uh, really cute shops. Uh, there was a, a deserted tower castle. They don't really use it much. It's more just a historical site there. But this was actually where Richard the Lionheart was imprisoned wow. for about a year on his way back from the Crusades. He came through this area, maybe used the Danube for, for travel and somehow offended the royalty there in Austria. And they actually put him in prison for a year or so of months, a few months anyway. And um, so there was a little bit of history there from clear back in the 1100s, 1192 or so when Richard the Lionheart was there and imprisoned for about a year, but, but just a beautiful little town, just a small town. And then this was gorgeous too, Barb, through this area. And, and the picture kind of shows that, especially that one on the left, uh, as we sailed, because we sailed here middle part of the day on this day. Okay. And the countryside was gorgeous. Yeah. It was breathtaking how green and beautiful it was. These little villas and even just some homes scattered along the side of the river as we sailed for oh, oh, an hour or so till we got to our next little place in the afternoon. I turned to Carrie and I said, we could live here. We, we, we could just move yeah. here. It was just beautiful. Yeah. So we had a great time, a really fun little tour. Again, fairly similar. Had some souvenir shops. We bought, a, we bought another uh, magnet there in, in Dernstein. We got a little fridge magnet from, oh, nice. from Dernstein and that's Carrie's thing is the fridge, the fridge magnets. And, and we, we didn't, we didn't, we're not big souvenir shoppers. We didn't bring tons of things home for our kids and grandkids. We have too many of them <laughs> to do that, but, but we just some fridge magnets and a couple of t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. But, but we just, we just had a, just a beautiful kind of smaller town. And we saw some countryside there that was just gorgeous. just breathtaking. Yeah, that's fun. Um, and so then the rest of the day, um, you were in Ibs. I don't know how to say. Y Ibs. B I think they say it Ibs. Okay. Y B E S. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't even know how to pronounce that little town right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and what was, was that it, like? Um, Another small town? Yeah, fairly okay. small, but they had a, a fun kind of a castle slash museum. And we were able to go through it. This is where uh, France Ferdinand and Sophia is one of the main players there from from a oh, hundred or so years ago. And uh, they were assassinated in 1914, which was one of the reasons World War I broke out. They were assassinated they, in this town? They, this they were, I think, down in Serbia. Okay. So, so they weren't, they were from this town. They, they lived okay. here in Ibs, 
but um, they they had traveled and were because the the boundaries in Central Europe there have changed so much through the right. years. I mean, Hungary was like three or four times bigger than it is presently. And so some of that has gone to uh, Slovakia and Austria. So Hungary is much, much smaller than it used to be. And so all of these political things going on through the years. Anyway, this, this royal couple was assassinated, I think, down in Serbia uh-huh. and was one of the main reasons World War I broke out. Yeah. And uh, just, but, but it's such a fun uh, museum, really more a museum, but it was a castle. It was great. And then <laughs> to cap it all off, a member of the royal family came out and visited with us. Wow. Yeah. And she was so kind and so thoughtful. We got, they brought out some champagne for, you know, for those that drink champagne, wow. we had orange juice in a, in a flute <laughs> that we got to drink. And a little piece of German or, or Austrian chocolate. But she was so kind and just took half an hour and talked with us and talked about her family and about the castle and really fun. But that that was that was a highlight too, the to to see that. So really fun. Again, a smaller town, but just again a, a cow a castle or a palace and slash museum. Just a really great time there that day. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing. I'm sure. Everybody who goes doesn't get to visit with the royal. Family. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't think she does it with everybody, but yeah. that, that was fun. That was that's a fun thing. So then you cruised overnight again and yep. came to the town of Linz. So. Uh, fun city, a little bit bigger city, not as big as Vienna, but but a pretty good sized city. Uh-huh. We did a, a city center walking tour. They took us to kind of their welcome center. And someone years ago had taken aerial shots of the city and they placed it down on the floor. Oh. <laughs> it was fascinating. Yeah, it was really fun to see the whole city. We were, we were standing on top of the city on, the, yeah. on this picture on the floor. Yeah. So it was kind of fun. Our tour guide was really fun. She was a little bit older lady, but uh, it was great. And she was taking us through some uh, a place where the government officials were. And like the mayor of the city walked in and she knew him. And he came over and said, hello, waved at us and welcomed (laughs) us. And she was talking with him. And and, uh, so it was really fun to see that. Again, the churches, you know, the Catholic church, primarily Catholic church. They have some Greek Orthodox, but uh, Catholicism's uh, the main thing there through Austria. And uh, we we saw a really fun church with some beautiful stained glass windows. Uh, Just really fun. Again, the Mozart influence. He was in Linz for... Uh, some months or, or even years. So everybody claimed Mozart just a little bit right. <laughs> all, right. all through Austria. <laughs> and so, but it was fun. Just a, just a really fun, again, just a beautiful city and a fun two hour walking tours. Great. Yeah, that is great. That is very fun. Okay. And then your next day, you were over into Passau, Germany. Yeah. Yeah. This was just a, a little bit into Germany. Uh, just a just a unique little town. They it's called the city of three rivers. So the Danube is kind of the main river there, but they have another one almost equal in size called the Inn River, and then a smaller one, the Ilts River. So it's kind of the city of three rivers, almost like Pittsburgh is in Pennsylvania. Yeah, beautiful. The the Danube itself was not a a breathtakingly beautiful city. It had enough sediment in it and so forth. It was kind of a uh, gray green color uh you know not not the most picturesque but this in river was unbelievably beautiful just a turquoise bright turquoise color and uh, just beautiful as as it came through and so so Passau was where these three rivers joined and then of course that makes the Danube a, a much bigger river but uh, just just really beautiful kind of uh, and again we took a nice walking tour there and saw the original St. Stephen's Cathedral. Most of these towns had a St. Stephen's Cathedral, okay. but this was the original, apparently, and uh, it was under renovation, but uh, really nice. Uh, we Several of the places, and it was quite uh, pre- uh, prevalent here, uh, lots of the cities had marks on one of the walls of the building where floods had risen, uh-huh. and so they had flood marks, you know, f- even from the 1500s and so forth, but some as recent as I think the, the most recent flood was uh, 2013. Wow. And they had water that came up, you know, quite high. And so some of those lower buildings would be flooded. We noticed in a couple of towns <clears throat> that the bottom 
floor of the building, you know, the, the, the first level yeah. was more a storage room. You know, they had, right. they didn't have their shops or their living accommodations there, but they were up on the second level because if the floodwaters came, then it didn't destroy all of their precious things, but if it was more a storage area or a, a passing through area because there are times even somewhat recently that floods have come. And, uh, but we, we passed through probably, I don't know, 10 or 11 locks along the river. Yeah. Every few miles they have a, a drop and they, they do that for power, you know, that they, they generate electricity. So yeah. you go through a lock and we were able to go, I think it was this day, we, uh, they did it in the middle part of the day and then they talked us through for an hour. They kind of talked us through what it, what it meant and the levels and, you know, it'd be about a 15 foot, 15 or 20 foot raise that would go since we were going up river. So yeah. we'd go pull into the lock and then all of a sudden after they had everything secure, then all of a sudden the boat would just start to rise <laughs> like this. Yeah. And then, then would take off again after 45 minutes or an hour. Mm -hmm. But uh, pretty interesting. And but just just the rivers, the Danube, not so much. We, we, we joke about the blue Danube. It's not it's not terribly blue. <laughs> it's not a beautiful <laughs> river. But two or three of those, the, the one in Passau and then the river there in uh, Bern, Switzerland, following our trip. Gorgeous. Just such a beautiful turquoise, beautiful river. A couple of those places. But Passau was great. It was a really fun place to visit. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then at the end of the cruise, so that was, you know, pretty much your final full day yeah. on the cruise was in Pass Out. And then um, you ended up in Degendorf, Germany. Were you able to see any of Degendorf or did no. you go immediately? No, really all it was was just a, a debarkation. You know, we just got yeah. off the boat. We had to be off by nine o'clock. They had to get it ready for the return trip, I, I think. Right. And so they had us off. And so we just, we waited an extra half hour. We had a taxi, which the crew on the boat was really, really, that we found that bar throughout. The, the, the people at the hotels, uh, even the, the restaurant servers, people on the street. It was amazing. And we found enough people that spoke good enough English to help us out when we needed help with how to buy a, a bus ticket or where to get up, you know, where to go to get to this town or whatever. But especially the hotel people and the, and the people on the cruise were great. So, so the, the, the people behind the desk on the cruise called a taxi for us, you know, to get us down to the train station. Very, very helpful. So we, we didn't really see anything in Degendorf. All we did was just get the taxi ride and get drive over the train through. station. And, yeah. yeah, drive through yeah. it on your way to yeah. your next destination. So, and then you had quite um, a lot of train riding, a lot of trains to get you to Bern, Switzerland. So before yeah. the trip, um, you had decided that following the cruise, you wanted to go to Bern. And yeah. why did you choose Bern? And kind of what, what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah, well, Switzerland's always been captivating. You know, yeah. this seems like a place you ought to visit. And it's near the Alps and, yeah. and some things. But my mother, uh, her line, the Rindlisbacher line is from Switzerland. Okay. And so since we were there, we thought we might not get back for a long time or maybe ever. <laughs> and so, you know, and then to ride a, a nice European bullet train was kind of appealing. So mm -hmm. you helped us arrange that. And I'm, I'm gonna stop right here for just a second and you, you may edit this out, Barb, I don't know. I just want you all, anybody listening to this uh, Zoom presentation, uh, Barb did not put me up. This is totally my own thing, but I'm telling you, Barb uh, Tuckett is amazing. And she's helped us on a couple of trips. We went to Cancun a few years ago, and she helped us with that as well. I'm, I'm never going anywhere else. Oh. Barb Tuckett's my, my cruise director. So uh, for all of you, just for what that's worth, and she did not put me up to this. This is my, my own little contribution here, but she's amazing. And I'm not, I'm not looking for any other cruise director. Barb's, Barb's, I say Barb's my man, but that's not right. <laughs> Barb's my woman, I guess, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. so you helped us do that. But yeah, our yeah. our itinerary for the, the train had like four transfers. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> we actually had nine transfers, which was a pain to haul yeah. luggage on and off of trains and then wait for an hour and catch another one. So yeah. so we got in over just over two hours late into Bern. 
But we, we liked Bern because it was the capital city and it was about oh, 45 minutes or an hour away from where my ancestors come from. Oh, nice. And so we were able to get up the very first day in Bern. We had a great hotel there as well with breakfast and everything. You really lined up a really nice multi. So helpful. The people there were, were just wonderfully helpful, uh, helping us with when trains are going to come and which train to catch and what museum we might go see. They were just really wonderful, spoke good English and they're really helpful. But the, the first day we went up to Trubschaken, which is an hour up in, toward the Alps, halfway up into the Alps. I wish we'd gone further. That's the one thing we wish we had done is bought a train ticket all the way up to Interlock and clear up the, yeah. you know, to the top end yeah. of the train line. We should have done that, but didn't think about it. So Trubschaken is very near, not exactly the same town, but very near where all my ancestors lived, you know, three or 400 years ago. Yeah. And uh, just really fun to see they had the Trubschaken is the place where the, the famous Cambly cookie factory is located. Nice. We were able to bring a couple of packages of cookies home. We're going to have a family party this weekend and, and share some, some Swiss cookies with our kids and grandkids. But really fun to just walk around a small town with cute, gorgeous uh, houses. Just kind of that German, Austrian, Swiss, typical house with, you know, the flower pots everywhere. You know, they have those window pots with flowers everywhere and kind of that traditional Swiss uh construction and, and cute houses and so forth. But our hotel was great. And uh, the, the city, the, so we did that the second day, we, we went up to the temple there in Bern. That was part of the reason we wanted to go to the LDS temple yeah. and had a, a nice session there. The session actually was in French. So we had earphones that we were listening to and started in English. My wife listened in English, but after about five minutes, I thought, wait a minute, I have a translator box right here around my neck. And so I flipped it over to Portuguese because I went to Brazil on my mission. <laughs> and so I listened to the session in Portuguese, which was kind of fun. But we, we got along just fine. You know, it, it, yeah. Switzerland's expensive. Yes. I mean, all of Europe is a little bit, but Switzerland especially. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the taxi ride, we, we tried to get a bus to get up to the temple. We found a bus and we're going to get on. But then that 10 o'clock bus didn't come. And we couldn't wait for 30 minutes or we would have missed the, our temple session. So we grabbed a taxi quick, but it was, oh, it's kind of pricey. It was a $50 bill to, to get up there. And then I didn't have that much cash, you know, euros. And he, he didn't have, most of the taxis did. He didn't have a, a visa card swiper. Right. And so then, of course, I was going to give him all the cash, even, even dollars and everything, but I still owe oh, $10 short and he, he wouldn't trust me. I said, look, I'll find you this afternoon and bring you some cash. Of course, he wouldn't. So we had to scramble and go around and find an ATM, you know, to, to get another uh, 100 euros and so forth so I could pay the taxi man, which made us almost late for the session. And we, <laughs> we still could have probably caught the bus, which would have cost us 10 bucks instead of <laughs> right. instead of 50. But right. it's whatever. It's OK. The Swiss temple's beautiful. Uh, for those that are LDS, it's the first temple in the church that used the film back in 1955. That's when Gordon B. Hinckley was over the communications and media for the church. And the, since there are so many languages and so much, the only temple really in Europe at the time. So they had a dozen languages they needed to, to take care of or so. And so that it was the first temple in the church that used the film. It's kind of interesting, beautiful, just a, a spectacular yard there. And the, the grass and everything was just beautiful. We were able to do that. And then we actually there in uh, Switzerland lined up a, a tour, just a walking tour. It was just the three of us, our tour guide and Carrie and me. Nice. And she took us on a three hour walk. We were exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> she took us everywhere. She was actually from Argentina, but she married a, a man there from Bern. And she was living there and just a, a really fun. She took us some places that we would never would have seen on a bus tour or maybe even with a large group. But we went down these stairs right down to the river a couple of times. They had a, a bear, uh, you know, a brown bear park there and a rose garden we walked up to. And and while we were there in Bern, we did pay oh, it was four or five dollars a day for each of us, kind of a city tax. But that allowed us to use all the buses and trams all around the city. So we'd get on a, we'd just have a few minutes and we'd just hop on a bus. 
or a tram. And we'd just go. And, and it went south of the city for two or three miles. And then it would turn around and come back. Yes. And we'd see, just see what was good uh, there. We'd get off and walk around for a minute and then get back on. And then we'd hop on another and go east and west. And we'd go east of the city and see some things. It was fun just to, to do that. We got quite familiar with the city and uh, much more comfortable by the time we finished up with, in Bern and then even in Zurich. Uh, we got pretty comfortable walking around, finding our hotel again, and everything. But it was it was really fun. So we had a, we had three really fun days in in uh, Switzerland, uh, a fourth day there, counting uh, Zurich, right. and just fun to see where my family had come from. And this de facto cap, they really don't have a capital in Switzerland. Bern is the de facto capital. It's where all the government uh, entities are. Uh Uh, But if you look up the capital of Switzerland, it's not going to list really anything. Uh But because that's where all the government is and all of the the castles and palaces and so forth. But just a beautiful city. Again, a little pricey. You know, we went out to eat and it was a little pricey to to get dinner, but it was great. You know, we just thought we were only here once, you know, so we wanted to enjoy. And we we had two or three really fun dinners and and uh, just beautiful. The river there in Bern was breathtaking, it's kind of a horseshoe, kind of comes down and circles the city in a horseshoe shape and is just breathtakingly beautiful and lots of museums, several churches and castles that we could walk to and see a really fun historical museum we went through for a couple of hours that gave the history of Bern and of Switzerland. It was really, really, really fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as people can probably tell, we didn't have other than I arranged their hotel and um, kind of the behind the scenes stuff to make sure that they had breakfast every morning. But other than that, um, we had no plans for you yeah. in turn. And so you were just really on your own and, and just got to got to enjoy and and make up your own experiences. Yeah. <laughs> but we stayed quite. Yeah, we, we, we probably should have lined up a couple of things there in Bern before we even left. So it took me about an hour to kind of get our phones up and going and find some things and get some tickets. But, but we, but we, we like I said, one day we just, my wife really wanted to get up into the Alps a little bit and, yeah. and it was beautiful. The train right up there was gorgeous. And, and then the temple, it was a, a high point. And then just a, that tour around the city was really fun, yeah. you know, with that, with that tour guide from, from Argentina, which is really funny, but, yes. and, and then again, just a, there's a, another fridge magnet that we that we picked up oh, from Bern. Nice. So we've got fun. the Swiss flag and a yeah. couple of things there. The the bear, you know, because that was a big thing there in Bern, and uh-huh. and the palaces and museums and so forth, kind of depicted there with our fridge magnet. So we had a great time. Yeah, that's really fun. So then for your final night, um, we got you to Zurich uh-huh. and a hotel stay there before your flight home, just so you could be actually in Zurich. Um, so, and how was that? Did you get to see any of Zurich or were you mostly just there for the overnight? No, we did. We, we got there about three o'clock in the afternoon okay. and a beautiful, probably our best hotel was there in, in Zurich. And uh, I, I don't want to be critical, but the, the help at the desk seemed, oh, it's not the right word, but a little snobbish. Yeah. <laughs> just a little, a little too high brow, high uh-huh. class. Uh-huh. But uh, but they were they were fine. But it was a beautiful hotel and a beautiful room, a wonderful breakfast that we had the next morning. But we were able to walk. So from about three thirty till, I don't know, seven or eight, we just did our own little walking tour around Zurich and we'd see a church. We would hike up to it and see most things were still in German, you know, or through the whole trip, Hungarian and Hungary, of course, German was spoken in Austria, Germany, and, and most of the time they're in Switzerland. And so some of the things we couldn't read much because of course it was in German and we don't speak German, but sometimes they had an English side as well that have, that have maybe French and German and English. And so we were able to read about the history, a little bit of a church or a museum or castle or something, but we just walked around old town and enjoyed the river. They have, they have a huge river that goes down through there again. And, uh, just, just a, a beautiful city, b- bigger, Zurich's bigger than Bern is. Bern's only about 180,000 people. Zurich could be, I think, two or three million maybe. So it's a bigger city, but again, very stoic, very old, 
you know, older buildings and cobblestone streets and but bigger. But we found some nice open areas there. Uh, actually, right on the river, this bridge was quite wide. And it was actually kind of a little uh, marketplace there where you could get some food or some souvenirs and some things kind of right on this uh, this bridge. We had a good time. We, we just walked around. And then the next morning, mostly we just got up and got to the airport and yeah. And needed, we needed, because they tell you, go three hours early on your, your international flights. And we pretty much needed all three hours there in Zurich. Boy, it was kind of a nightmare to, to get through all the, it was fine, but it just took a long time. You know, just lines were not that long, but really slow getting through, you know, your checkpoints and checking your passports and getting your tickets, boarding passes and everything. But uh we made it and we got on and had all the Delta flights were great. They were on time and everything was great there. We flew Delta home from Zurich to New York, had a two hour layover and needed kind of those two hours because it was a lot of checking things there when you get back to the States too. We did have to have our 24 hour COVID test before we came home. We were able to actually did that just before we left Bern. It has to be just within the day, you know, before. So we got that just before we got on the train to, to go to Zurich. And that was fine. We didn't have any hold up. It just, everything takes a long time to check passports and check your COVID cards and your 24 hour negative test and all those things. So if, if, if any of you are going international, yeah, go to the airport two and a half or three hours early. Cause most of the time you need it. When we first got to Salt Lake to embark, they took such good care of us. We got through everything in 30 minutes. And so we, we had a good hour and a half, almost two hours before we took off because the Delta folks really took good care of us in Salt Lake City. But everything else, there's just so much to check with passports and forms and COVID things and everything else. But it was great. And we got through and just we just had a great time. And, and, the, and the flights home were great. You know, they had a, a dinner for us coming back to New York and plenty of entertainment. You know, they had movies and music and even streaming shows and all sorts of things on Delta that we enjoyed. And the leg room was adequate. Again, we're flying economy. I, I told you some time ago, Barb, sometime on my bucket list, I want to fly first class <laughs> right. sometime, but, right. but it's, it's twice, it's about twice as much to yeah. fly first class. So, so, but we were fine the flying coach, you know, and, yeah. and Delta is kind of my choice for an airline carrier. When I fly, I've always had a pretty good experience with Delta and not so much with some of the other providers, so that you so you helped us line up that that really nice flight with Delta that was great. So. Yeah, yeah. So well, good. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun to get to hear about all this. Now, before we are done, I just wanted to know what was food wise. What were maybe just a couple of the highlights? Maybe something you had on the cruise. Maybe something off the cruise or whatever. Anyway, I just want yeah. to hear a little tiny bit about something food wise. Well, we, we had fun when we were in different places too, especially like in Bern, Switzerland, we tried different things. Pizza was huge in okay. Bern. It's, just, it's not that far from Italy anyway. Yeah. So they had pizzerias all over the place and we got a, a fun pizza, pricey, you know, it was 28 or 30 bucks for a pizza there in Bern, yeah. but it was good and it was fun. Um, on the boat, on the, on the Avalon cruise, they just had such fun selections for dinner, especially. Their breakfasts and lunches were great too, because they had lots of European, you know, cheeses and meats and and goulashes, you know, the, the, the things that that were kind of according to the the location where we were. But dinner was really fun, and they had a four a four course dinner every single night, and so you'd have kind of an appetizer, and then maybe a salad or a soup, and then your main course, and then dessert. The ice creams were amazing. They served ice cream, not just soft ice cream, which I'd love that too. Yeah. But then scoop up these things with ice cream and put whipped cream and nuts and toppings on it and so forth. Wonderful ice cream. It was wow. I'm an ice cream junkie, yeah. and the ice cream was really good. But maybe my most surprising meal, it was really good, was roast duck. Hmm. They had that one night, about our second or third night there, and I thought I'm going to be brave and try this because yeah. I grew up hunting ducks and geese and so forth. And duck was never that good. Right. Goose was good, but the ducks, just never that, that tasty. But this was really good. It was really good and always some vegetables. And you'd have a salad or soup or another fruit dish before for your appetizers. And then you'd have, there was cake or ice cream or something for a little dessert. Portions weren't huge. Sometimes they bring the portion out and I think, 
man, that's not much duck or not much roast beef or something. Yeah. But with all the other things, it was great. You were plenty full by the time you finished. And uh, so the roast duck was really good. We had uh, m- more pork and chicken. They didn't have too much beef. Okay. Some, they had some, some, some two or three nights they had a beef selection, but more, uh, they had a lot of fish. And we had perch, uh, salmon, uh, bass, you know, sea bass. I had that one night. It was, I'm not a big fish guy, but it was good. I had that. And uh, so just some really fun things, but probably the roast duck was my most notable yes. selection that night. It was actually really good. It tasted really, yeah. really good. And it was fun to try some things. So that, and then we just tried to find a, a nice restaurant when we were in Switzerland, you know, a couple, two or three times, just try some local thing. We had a pizza one night and we had in Hungary, we had a, uh, Carrie ordered kind of a Hungarian goulash was tasty. And I had kind of a pork and bacon, uh, it almost reminded me of a chicken fried steak, just a thin cut of pork with some breading on it. And it was delicious. So we just tried to, to experience that, but the, the boat was really amazing. It had four or five choices every single night at dinner that you could choose from. And again, with those, uh, local selections, trying to cater to where we were on the cruise. It was really fun. Anything else you want to add or anything you would recommend for anybody who's maybe wanting to go on a river cruise or? We just had a great time. Again, we just, we kind of, we've been planning this for a year. I, I contacted yeah. you a full year ago Yeah, it's and been a you, long you have been so good. And I, again, I want you all to know you guys that might be listening to this Barb check with us two or three dozen times before just to get everything lined up, ready to go. And even on the trip, you contacted us two or three times, make sure we got there, make sure everything was going okay. So we were very grateful for that. But um, yeah, we just thought this is kind of our retirement gift. We just retired last year, Uh both of us. And so as a gift to each other, this was kind of our our big thing, thinking, you know, probably once in a lifetime thing, but we may be getting a hold of you again, young lady, to take care of us again. So... Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share, subscribe, or leave a review. If you'd like to contact me about a vacation, the best way is to visit my website, sweetdreamstravel.net. To connect on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. See you next time.